uh, I will I will start with the Corona uh, crisis. Um, what will be or what is already the political impact of this crisis on our democracies, also on the would say systemic competition internationally. If you're looking to China, uh, China seems uh, to, to to be to be the champion in in managing the the Corona crisis. Uh, they have a full comeback economically. Uh, this is a huge challenge I think, to to liberal democracies in terms of output legitimacy. Um, so, so which kind of political system is better equipped uh, to deal with these kind of crises? This uh, is, is, is it's, it's a global moment um, in this uh, competition, systemic competition. So. But I, I very much agree with um, a uh, remark by uh, Timothy Garten uh, Ash yesterday evening when he said, probably Corona is not uh, creating really new phenomena. It's, it's, it's kind of a catalytic factor on accelerator of already existing trends. And one of these trends is that the government is back. Um, and, and even a little bit more specific and a little bit more critical, um, the trend to, towards the kind of executive state um, is, uh, is been strengthened uh, by, by the, the corona. A, a crisis. In Germany, we, we have a very interesting debate just in these days uh, that uh, the, the opposition in parliament is demanding that the parliament should get back political sovereignty. And they, they are not, not longer willing to accept that all uh, these uh, decisions uh, um, intervening in, 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 in fundamental citizens' rights, the right to mobility, uh, um, um, uh, the, the right to education, uh, the restriction on, on private life and on, on business life are only decided by uh, executive uh, bodies, the, the, the federal government and the state, the lender governments in Germany. Um, and you already saw this tendency towards the executive uh, uh, state uh, in former crises in the, in the last um, maybe, maybe 15 years. If I start with the financial crisis in 2008, 2009, it was a very similar experience. Dramatic like, decisions, uh, not only on finance uh, like policies, uh, had been, been, been uh, made by uh, the European governments. Uh, not by the European, uh, by the European institutions, but by the, the national governments. Um, and only later they had been ratified by, by, by the, the parliaments. And it was very similar in 2015 during the refugee crisis, uh, this really uh, astonishing move of, of Charles Van Merkel was uh, a very lonely uh, decision. Of course, it was approved uh, by the, the a cabinet of ministers, but um, there was not 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 a, not a big uh, long debate, and uh, not at all a, a parliamentary decision uh, than on that. So obviously, in moments of uh, crisis, these this is the hour of the the ex ex executive uh, than governments, and this trend uh, has been been uh, than accelerated now. And a second uh, phenomenon related to that, it is um, about government by restrictions. Yeah? Then restricting uh, um, social life, uh, restricting uh, the public uh, life, restricting eco econo uh, economic activities, restricting mobility. Um, so, and, and I, I'll come back to that in a, in, a, in a moment, if you take that as a kind of blueprint for climate 
uh, policies. I think this is extremely misleading, not only because of democratic and, and liberal um, um, concerns, uh, but also because this is not the way uh, we would we we, uh, we would really be able to um, um, limit the climate change to manageable proportions. So to keep it. Uh, under two uh, two degrees uh, warming than globally, which probably may be kind of threshold when things are beginning to spiral out of, of control. Um, so, um, and um, maybe a third element, um, in, in uh, very interestingly to, to observe uh, in, along with the, the kind of public debate and the political management of the corona crisis uh, is what I would call the scientific illusion or maybe even the scientific trap that science uh, has to uh, tell us what to do. Uh, of course, I, I'm, I'm far away from from uh, this kind of scientific skepticism to to, to question the findings of uh, uh, the medical science if it comes to to corona or the the uh, natural science climate uh, science when it when it comes to the the environmental crisis. But uh, it's a very interesting observation. Uh, you have this. For the first time in, in Germany, uh, it's really uh, that that um, some leading uh, virologists and 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 uh, medical like experts are seen as the uh, authority, which has to guide uh, the, uh, who who has to guide political decisions. Um, uh, there's a, a huge coming out of, of uh, scientists uh, in, in, in the media as like public uh, persons. Uh, but at the same time, it, it, it is a very interesting learning process. First, of course, there is not s such a thing like the science. Uh, science in itself is pluralistic and it's in a constant evolution. Uh, there are a lot of open open questions still, uh, a lot of ongoing debates within the scientific community. And of course, then, because in, in, in the beginning, it was the hour of the virologists, and then other scientific discipline, uh, uh, disciplines then came in, uh, the psychologists, what is the impact of uh, the lockdown on children if you keep them for weeks and weeks uh, then at home, uh, the economists, uh, the, the economic uh, uh, impact of uh, this kind of rigid uh, regulation. So it is a learning process that uh, science is uh, uh, a pluralistic um, uh, world and it's in a constant evolution. Interestingly, uh, if it comes to, 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 to climate policy, I would say we are still in the first stage that um, if you look, uh, listen to, to the kids from Fridays for Future, follow the science. And uh, these science, these are the most outspoken uh, than climate scientists uh, with uh, uh, their demands, uh, which policy only has to follow. It's, uh, if, if you have this kind of understanding of the relationship between science and politics, uh, parliaments and governments are reduced to the implementation of science, of scientific finding, findings. And I would say this is the abolishment of the, the, the very uh, core, the, the meaning of uh, the democratic politics, because this is always about uh, conflict on, on, on alternatives and um, uh, so in, in the environmental movement, we have this kind of, there is a, a, a return of the neoliberal, there is no alternative, as Margaret Thatcher, there is no alternative way of thinking. Um, so, and, and um, I'm, I'm 
Uh, this is this is a, a very tricky thing question. So, at, at the one hand, of course, we have to take these kind of scientific findings very very serious and downplaying uh, the the uh, research on on climate change is of course uh, misleading and and extremely dangerous. On the other hand, uh, you have I think we we have to stick on the. Um, the own right of politics, and that that also uh, the the uh, question how to deal with climate change cannot be uh, finally answered by science. It has to be figured out in the public discourse, uh, including uh, the conflict of, of aims and 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 values. And that climate change is not a part or not a buff of this process. Of uh, and conflicting interests, values, opinions, um, and so on. But uh, then, in substance, if we if we come back to the what I called uh, the, the the government by restriction, uh, there's a strong tendency also in the in environmental um, then movement and in green green politics that restriction is the main tool to deal with the climate change. So restricting production, uh, restricting consumption, restricting mobility. Um, so, and, and if you look to the, the, uh, the, 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 the climate impact of the Corona crisis, we had a, a really severe global economic crisis. Probably uh, the global uh, GDP um, will go down this year by maybe 5% with dramatic consequences, especially in the developing world. You have for the first time in 20 years an increase of hunger, uh, of, of a sharp increase of, of poverty. Um, so, and at the same time, this economic recession of, of 5% with uh, almost closing down aviation in Europe um, and, and a lot of uh, economic restrictions, uh, we, we only have an, um, 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 a decline of global CO2 emissions, maybe between 7 and 8%. But the goal we have to achieve, if we want to avoid catastrophic climate change, is to reduce uh, CO2 emissions by around about 90% over the next 20, 30 years. So the idea that you could go forward to climate neutrality by restriction is completely illusionary. Uh, it, 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 it would really uh, lead us into a kind of Pol Pot uh, than, uh, than policies. Um, so, and, and uh, of course, and, and I'm, I'm not an advocate that we don't need regulation. We don't need a certain kind of, of restrictions. This is not my, uh, the way of thinking, but first we need sm to think about smart regulation. And uh, smart means regulation, which is creating incentives for innovation. Um, for what I'm calling uh, a new a green industrial revolution, uh, decoupling economic growth, decoupling prosperity from um, environmental degradation. Um, some people think this is uh, pure uh, wishful thinking, but I'm, I'm deeply convinced this is uh, not only feasible, it's, uh, it's uh, the, the, um, I think the, the only realistic answer to a growing world economy, growing world population, uh, growing urbanization than globally. Um, that we, we, we managed to decouple uh, economic prosperity from environmental degradation by, I would say, three fundamental processes. Uh, first, what we are calling the green energy revolution, departing from fossil fuels uh, towards renewables and in the future kind of solar hydrogen. Then economy, uh, second, 
uh, efficiency revolution, ma making more out of less, creating more prosperity with less natural resources. Uh, if you think about uh, like modern uh, uh, light bulbs, um, you can save 70 to 80 percent electricity without any loss of comfort. Uh, these kind of things. And a third fundamental move is uh, towards a kind of uh, zero waste uh, recycling economy, uh, economy in which every residual substance is return returning either in the agricultural or in the industrial process. So this is an extremely ambitious, but in, in, in my view, it's also a kind of promising challenge. You know, it's, it's about a, a new start. Uh, it's about an adventurous uh, departure to deal with uh, climate change, not in this uh, sense, uh, oh, child, climate change is the revenge for human hybrids, for overshoot of human economic activities, overshoot of consumption, overshoot of mobility. We have to shrink ourselves. Uh, we have to minimize our impact. No, it's about uh, then reinventing uh, the, the industrial modernity and, and moving forward to kind of intelligent cooperation uh, with, with, with nature. So I think this is maybe the promising part um, to finalize of the uh, European Green Deal project. Uh, it's, it's very much about investment in innovation. Uh, and if we want to, to uh, keep uh, than climate change uh, within the two uh, degree limits. It is not about less, it is about more investments in restructuring our public infrastructure, rebuilding the energy system, the transport system, uh, reconstructing the chemical industry and so on and so forth. So it, it demands more investment and innovation and the Green Deal could trigger this in the combination of public and private than investments, but on the same time, it has a, a, a flip side, um, which I'm looking at quite critical. It could uh, develop into kind of top-down, um, kind of green planning than, than economy. Uh, you are defining overarching uh, than goals and overarching uh, uh, reduction target, and then you are breaking it down. And every country, every economic branch uh, with like definite targets uh, they have to fulfill into uh, a certain time span, five years, 10 years, 20 years plan. Um, so, and I, I think this is kind of a uh, bank trap uh, because we need much more flexibility, much more uh, uh, space for like, different solutions for creativity. And maybe uh, we will also need uh, uh, new instruments of carbon capture uh, because we will not able to, to reach these uh, reduction uh, targets only by um, technological innovation. Um, so I think carbon capture has to, to play a, a bigger role. And finally, I think it's the, the, the $100 uh, Lang question: If if we would will be able to turn this kind of ecological transition into an economic success story, to make it an economic success story, this is extremely crucial, at least in in two dimensions. First, otherwise we will lose uh, the the societal uh, consensus. We will lose the support of the of the society if the if going green. Will will meet. We we will slip into deep economic and social uh, frictions. So we we have to rebuild or to reconstruct the the industrial apparatus by keeping it going uh, going on, avoiding avoiding uh, long, deep uh, uh, frictions, and making it a success story also internationally because only. 
when becoming climate neutral uh, will turn out as an as an economic accessory, it will be it will become a kind of uh, example for for the big rest of the world for. Uh, all these countries for for which economic growth and prosperity still are um, extremely important uh, than goals and 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 values. So for the whole devel developing world, um, this is absolutely crucial to uh, combine um, the environmental protection with. Uh, economic development and uh, economic prosperity and i think this is the big challenge um to to the uh, european green deal and um if 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 we manage to do that i think we we will be able to keep uh then um a kind of liberal political approach to environmental uh, protection and not to slip in a kind of authoritarian um, environmental state. Thanks a lot.